Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Sabrina Talbot, and I will be speaking to you today on the feasibility of collaboration in the Kwani Surveying Treaties. Just an overview of what I will discuss today, and a brief introduction, after which I will discuss the purpose and originality of this research, the literature reviewed, the methodology, the findings, conclusion, and then I'll end with any questions. The great Nelson Mandela once proclaimed, a good head and a good heart are always a formidable combination. But when you add to that a literate tongue or pen, then you have something very special. Now in terms of academic writing, the first time we encounter it is during our honours treaties. A problem that is being encountered more and more in honours treaties is the over the the excessive workload of mentors and their inability to concentrate one-on-one -on -one personally with students. The NMU Kwani Surveying Department has identified collaboration in the form of group work as a form of avoiding this. But this, this cannot take place without successful um, research into the idea. Therefore, it brings me to my purpose. The purpose of this research will be to identify the factors relative to QSs in terms of the benefits, challenges and effective evaluation structure and implementation structure of group work and to provide an indication of whether the implementation is a viable option and provide guidance in relation to the implementation of group work. The objectives of the study include to determine the benefits and challenges to determine a congruent, successful implementation process and the most effective evaluation process, and to determine if the implementation process has a positive effect on the caliber of graduates. Group work in postgraduate education has been highly researched due to the underlying challenge of most universities having to supply capable graduates that are not only capable in the competencies of the profession that they go into, but also in terms of the teamwork that they will encounter one day. For this purpose, group work is defined as a set of individuals who share a common fate, that is, who are interdependent in the sense that any event which affects one member will likely affect all, described by Fiddler in 1964. The benefits have been described through literature throughout, with the Royal Institute of Chartered Surveyors defining mandatory competencies which can be learned through group work and treaties, such as conflict avoidance, management and dispute resolution, team working, and communication and negotiation. Now, other benefits which have been introduced by literature include more comprehensive assignments, the development of interpersonal skills, and the creation of more advanced work, including the sharing of workloads. Now, not all perspectives are good, with some challenges being encountered. Galbati and Samuels, Walker and, and Wadwa all introduced the following challenges. The timely impl implementation of it, the hampering of individual outlook, the interpersonal conflict that arises, the free riding problem in which one student doesn't perform as much as any of the other students, and the reduction of use of mental effort by individuals. This can be overcome through an effective implementation and evaluation process. Factors affecting implementation include things like how the group will be selected, with Blows in 2003 discussing different types of group selection, such as self-selection, random selection, high with high, low with low. It was discovered that the best form of selection was self-selection. The number of group members is also an important factor, with group sizes being reflecting the difficulty of the task on hand. In terms of assessment, one of the most important criteria in literature, Hemmer 2008 identified that the combined group mark as a problem as it promotes unfair assessment. Gammy and Matson in 2007 described approaches to combat this inequality, including weighted averages and further assessments, such as oral tests on the work that they have produced. The overall perception, therefore, is highly ambiguous, with a mostly mixed perception. Some neutral, neutral opinions include Yin in 2011, who stated that it depended solely on the evaluation process. Negative perceptions from Hemmer in 2008, who concentrated on the free rider problem, and positive with Walker of 2001, Gammy and Matson of 2007, and Darvish and Zoe of 2006, 
stating the benefits that have been previously discussed. With regards to this current research, a quantitative research method has been applied. The collection of data was by means of an electronic questionnaire. The population were all graduates of the Kwani Surveying Qualification at the Nelson Mandela Metropolitan University who had graduated within the past 10 years. It was 128 contactable graduates. The graduates were contacted through email and when this didn't suffice, through social media. The questionnaire was piloted before it was sent out and the questions were based on the graduates' perception based on their own postgraduate group work experience. The questionnaire consisted of five sections, section one being the demographic questions, section two, the quantity surveying skills needed in the workplace compared to skills attainable through group work and research, section three, benefits and challenges of group work, section four, implementation and evaluation, and section five, overall perception and comments. The data collected was quantitative, consisting of nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio data and the scale used was a Likert scale on 1 to 7. The Man Whitney U test was also implemented to compare and evaluate the, the transferable skills that were obtained through using group work into the workplace. This leads me to my findings. There were 60 respondents out of 128 contacted graduates. This equated to a rate of 48%. I believe this is quite high because it shows the importance of the subject matter. In terms of demographics, over 50% of the graduates, as you can see from this table, or from the figure, were graduated in the past two years, and 88% were still practicing quantity surveyors, while only 47% wished to study further in academic research. This shows that they have the basis to be able to answer the questions. Benefits. In terms of the most important benefit, that was described in literature, that the skills that were attained through group work were used in the workplace. The graduates were asked, in, based on 19 skills identified in literature, what the prevalence was in the workplace, and then, in a separate question, how they felt their ability to obtain it through group work. 17 of these, out of the 19 skills were identified as significantly different. Therefore, there is a significant difference in the data two sets which allows us to make the assumption that they are not transferable and the skills obtained through group work were not used in the workplace successfully. This is in contradiction to the literature of Shurik and Frikadel, Beemans et al., Chetman and Childs, Leverson and Wadwa. Now in terms of other benefits, the students were requested to base to determine the prevalence of the benefits that, that were encountered in literature in their group work experiences. As you can see in this figure, all, all of the benefits were prevalent, with the most being collaboration of ideas and pooling of knowledge and resources, and the least being mentors being more hands-on. In terms of challenges, they were again asked to rate the prevalence, and unequal workload and unfair assessment were the two highest with the least being conflict due to cultural differences. When you compare the two, the benefits were found to be more prevalent than the experienced challenges, with 76,78% compared to the 68,8%. This implies that if the, students, if the students see more perceived benefits, they will have a better outlook on, on group work, as described by Darvish and Zoe in 2006. The implementation process, the respondents were in relative congruence on the implementation process. 38 or 63 percent of the respondents stated that the most effective way of selecting groups was by letting the individuals pick themselves. This was in line with blowers of 2003. And 46, which is 77 percent, stated that the mentors should have little to no influence in the selection. This again was in line with blowers of 2003. 52 or 87 of the respondents believe that the transparency of evaluation was the most important feature, while 28 or 47 percent stated that the entire group receiving the same work was the best way that they had experienced um, group marking. Many of the respondents noted that a form of testing of students' understanding of the entire project should be implemented 
into the critique, such as was stated by Gammy and Matson of 2007. Overall view, when requested to, to explain their overall view, the overwhelming percentage, which was 42 respondents, 70%, stated that they were not in favour of implementation. 34, which is 57%, stated that they perceived a negative effect of the treaty's module. Well, again, 42, this might be because 42 or 70% of the respondents stated that they had a neutral to negative experience with group work previously. This was reiterated in their sentiments and comments with statements such as, group work and NMU quantitative treaties will dilute the academic strength of honors QS students. And I wouldn't hire someone who got their degree through group work. This is in line with HEMA of 2008. Now, in concluding, when synthesizing these results to the objectives, in determining the benefits and challenges, it was found that the benefits and challenges identified by literature were all applicable to the, to the Kwani surveying group, and skill, except for skills which were not transferable. The heightened overall prevalence of benefits is indicative of the potential success of implementation of group work. When determining the successful implementation process and most effective evaluation process, the graduates were incongruous with the literature and the evaluation was the most important criteria. This also indi is indicative that if you set a proper implementation process, this can help alleviate some of the challenges experienced. When determining if it has a positive effect on graduates, literature was ambiguous, but the perception of respondents was unanimous uh, and highly negative. Impl the implication of this is that although there might be perceived benefits from the, from the implementation, it does not directly relate to the, the successful feeling of completing in group work. Therefore, in concluding, my practical implications and recommendations is that all, uh, despite all re academic requirements being able to be met, I don't believe it is wise to implement such a thing before further research is undertaken to determine the, if the, the product of individual treaties compared to the product of a group work treaties is equatable. As the perceptions of the, the perceptions of the employers will, sorry, as the perceptions of the employers are one of the most important things for graduates as they leave the, the university. It is important that we understand that when graduates are leaving the university and in finding employment one day, if the employers have a negative view on the qualification that they have received, it could negatively affect employment opportunities. Therefore, educators should refrain from using collaboration and treaties modules until further research is undertaken. Thank you. Well then, <laughs> now I can tell you nervous, but it was excellent. Um, I just wanted to ask, I know we spoke about it at proposal stage, mm. that we um, said that obviously there are some universities in South Africa that are doing the collaboration. Yes. Um, obviously you focused on the NMMU and our yep. past graduates who haven't done it. Yes. Did you speak to anybody or is there, was there a previous study done from any of the other universities? There's no previous study and, and I, have, I haven't spoken to anyone. I wanted, my original concept was to compare the two, but unfortunately due to ethical considerations, there wasn't a time, that's why I've done the graduates. So that, yeah. that could be a further? Yeah, so that's why the further research could definitely be an option in determining the difference between the two. Thanks, Edra. Um, I think that when, you, when we talk about group work, it, the numbers of students come into effect. If you look at our, your class at the mm. moment, um, I think group work is not a, um, an option to go. But if you look at the group, if we were 60 mm. students compared to other universities, um, the time, you've mentioned about the time mm. involved, uh, then it might be an option. Mm. And currently at the NMMU, there's a lot of departments using the group, group work effectively. Mm. You talked about the free, uh, free riding, there's, there's ways and means how we can actually uh, overcome that. Uh, in your uh, research, did you actually, uh, in your questionnaire, did you actually uh, ask um, if we had to go for group work, if that was an option, a uh, number of students that might be... I did. I, I asked 
Uh, because obviously it was it was uh, based on the perceptions of the what they had experienced previously in their honours group work experiences. And I did ask a question on how many they thought would be ideal in the group. Um, I did get a very ambiguous answer. I got four, which I think is quite high. So I don't I don't know if they. I'm not too sure about that. I have I had further dwelled into that, but that was in the treaties, not in my thing. Okay. Professor Dice. Uh, yeah, it's not a question. It's just a comment, and it's actually latching onto what Sharon has asked about other universities. I've been the external examiner of. UKZN two or three years ago where they did group work. And I can just comment um, that the end product of the treatise was quite a good quality. I think it's because there were more input, more students had mm -hmm. input into that document. So the end result of the document was quite good. But whether it actually benefited each individual team member, I'm not so sure of. It's just a comment. Yes, for interest sake, they've reverted back to singles now. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Anita? Just, uh, just for interest sake, how do you feel now that you've presented your thing by yourself? Do you, would you prefer to work in a group? No. <laughs> yeah. uh, definitely. I think in the beginning of the year, when you hear the possibility of group work, you're like, yes, <laughs> less work, that's perfect, honours year, honor year. But I definitely don't feel like the treaty's amount of work is unmanageable. It's hard, it's definitely hard, and I think it pushes us as students, but I don't think it's a, a, to the point where we can't complete it. And I think in terms of like the mentorship side of it, I think it, a lot of it depends on the students as well. Like this, a lot of students don't actually participate with mentors. so. In terms of mental workload, it can actually be a lot less than effectively having 21 students. I, I do. I'm not taking anything away from you. That's <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, but from my, from a student perspective, I definitely think it's worthwhile doing it individually. <laughs> they might not agree. <laughs> On the floor, Professor Maru. There's an educationist in South Africa who's almost a household name because he's not only an educationist, he's a psychologist and he is in philosophy as well. And he said that if group work is going to be imposed, the number of members of the group must not exceed three. Mm. And from a psychologist's point of view, he said that is the number that most ideally eliminates the free-riding passenger mm. who leaves the work to the others. If it's a group of four, you, will, you can have two and two within mm. a split, and always the work will go to the two who work the hardest, and the mm. others will benefit from the expertise. Mm. So they decided that if it has to be imposed, three should be the maximum number. Mm. But you raised the question of own selection, mm. if group work is going to be the order of the day. Mm. Now, if you select, you know what they say, birds of a feather flock, flock by together. themselves. <laughs> no, they flock by themselves. So you'll find a group there that is absolutely driven and they will, they will rise, cream always rises to the top, and you will find that that group will excel. Meanwhile, there will be other candidates, as Mr. Cumberledge raised, in a class of 60, who will be left isolated with nobody wanting them, because in actual fact their reputations are not good. Hmm. So we see how very much reputation and the willingness to work hmm puts people in the front row, as it were. So I think your, your research is brilliant. I know universities that have instituted group work, and I know that the lecturers have just shelved them, mm -hmm. shelved those groups, and that the poor kids, as they say, are just left on the block, mm -hmm. and they've got to look after themselves. So I'm greatly in support as an individual, and not a member of the panel today, I'm greatly in support of your research. 
I do not approve of group work unless time is of the essence to the point where nobody's going to be doing anything at all. Mm -hmm. So divide it into groups and get it done in half an hour, mm -hmm. a short assignment. But I think it's a very courageous research that you've done, Sabina. And I think it's very beneficial. I hope it'll make an impact. And may, <laughs> I, may I step right out into the firing line and say that I hope that our department never institutes group work <laughs> as a principle because it is destructive and employers don't like it. They say, well, who was who in that little zoo? Yeah. You know? And yeah. who actually did the work? And it becomes a complicated issue. There are employers sitting here today who must wonder. And I think you are very courageous. Congratulations. It was an excellent presentation. Thank you. Further questions? Thank you very much, Sabrina. Thank you.